Center Package is your one-stop shop for sending care packages to family and friends located within the New York um, State Prison System. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Um, for the first 18 years of my life, when I turned 18, I went to prison to 24. Um, when I came out of prison, I kind of was forced into business because it's hard to find a job, period, when you go to jail at 18 and you have no kind of background in any like I was a plumber before and I could just pick up where I left off. Um, so I was kind of forced into being a businessman and to, to do things for myself. Uh, when I came home, I opened, I signed a deal with Sprint PCS and I opened 16 Sprint PCS stores uh, across the United States from California to Florida. Um, I had four in Texas, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, all over Florida. Um, I did that for about four years from 1998 to 2002. I came home in 98, started the Sprint stuff in 98. 2002, I stopped the Sprint stuff and I started a record company um, called the Commission Entertainment Group. Our artist was Mr. Cheeks from the Lost Boys. Um, we had a few other artists, but he was the, our big name artist. Um, in doing that for four years, I learned marketing. And so when the record label finished, I started a marketing company in um, 2003 or something, early 2004. What was the name of it? I still have it today. It's called uh, New York City Promo Authority. Okay. And we do like websites, graphic design, search engine optimization, printing, stuff like that. So. In the years doing that from 2003 on, I knew that I wanted to find something that I could use my marketing skills or the stuff that I've learned um, for a business that is my own. And in 2008, my little brother got sentenced to 25 to life in New York State, and I had to send him a package. Uh, he, got sentenced, he got sentenced, he went upstate, he called me, I need you to send me a package. I, I did Fed time, so we didn't have packages, so I had zero idea. Uh, I knew they get pack, I knew they got packages, but I had zero idea of what was involved, what they could get, what they couldn't get. So my brother um, told me on the phone, get me this color T-shirt, this, and you know, he gave me a list. I had to take off the next day from work and go shopping around and uh, store to store, buying the different things that I needed. Got that stuff back to my house. I live in the city. I don't have box or tape or packing peanuts or you know any kind of um, shipping supplies that I would need to send this package out. So I had to go back out to UPS, spend twenty dollars on one box, a roll of tape, blah blah blah. Then I had to carry that box and I got it back to my house, I wrapped it all up and I had to carry this thirty five pound box to the post office. And standing online at the post office I was like, there's gotta be a better way to do what I just did in two thousand eight than the way I just did it. Um, so that was like the end of 2008, like September. I took the rest of 2008 to um, get my brain together, you know? And um, January 2009, we got incorporated, Center Package was born. My brother called me and there was a bunch of items that weren't approved. Again, I didn't have no experience with this. He told me to get him, like one of the things I remember was salami. like. Sliced salami, hermetically sealed. I went and got him sliced salami, hermetically sealed. But one of the ingredients that the salami was made with was wine. And so I know that they threw that out. So it's really a, um, it's really hard to know what's approved, what color. There's so many restrictions that you almost need some kind of degree to know exactly what is approved and what's not approved. The biggest challenge I faced was funding. Um, I worked the whole year of 2009 building the company. So making uh, the vendor relationships and uh, opening accounts and doing my pricing and creating the website and creating the catalog and creating promotional items, um, putting a small business plan together. And by the end of 2009, this was all ready. And I started pitching the company in the beginning of 2010 to try to get the money. It took me the whole year of 2010. I got the money in the, right before Christmas of 2010, in December. So that was the biggest um, 
that was the biggest challenge that I, I faced. We were funded by a um, a guy that a, a business, another businessman. His name is Jacob, and he is a pharmacist. He owns nine pharmacies, and he thought it was a good business idea. He didn't know anybody in jail. He's never knew any. He never sent a package. He didn't even know you could get packages. Um, and even in getting him to write a check, that was still a six month. Uh, thing you know, from the time I started talking to him about June, he still didn't write. He didn't write the check till December. So in the beginning, we were inundated with letters from um, inmates just saying, "Wow, this is great. This should have been done years ago. Um, thank you." And they would give us suggestions. Like when we first rolled out, we only had clothing, a limited amount of food, and magazines. So they were giving us a lot of suggestions, like, you know, you need to add this, you should add this, you should add this. And one constant um, thing that everybody talked about was music. It, it was like in almost every letter, people were like, yo, we don't have no music, we only could get music on cassette. If you can figure out how to get us the music on cassette, it will be a big seller. Before send the package, people used to um, bootleg the music. They used to get a cassette or, or get it uh, off the internet maybe and put it on cassette and uh, send it to their family. It was not an official way since they stopped making cassettes. There was no quality, real cassettes floating around the prison system unless they were there from the late 80s or early 90s. I knew about it from my time in prison. Um, so I knew that music was a big thing and would be a big seller. I had zero idea how to get it done. Um, it even it was even more than a year, maybe a year and a half before we e that we were in business, that we even started the process of figuring out who's gonna, uh, how we're gonna do this. 2011, I did a charity event for In Arms Reach, which is a charity that we belong to, and uh, they're actually partners in Center Package. And we did a charity event, and I invited my lawyer, who was my law my entertainment lawyer, when I had my record company. And after that charity event, um, I started really getting on Hector about making the meeting with Universal. And um, he made the meeting. He would, he knew Sean Peckis well. Um, made the meeting. We went up there, and maybe we contacted Sean in June. And by the time that we sat down with Sean, it was probably like August. And then by the time that we actually did our deal was November, and then we got our first um, order, you know, huge order of cassettes in January, just this last of 2013. It was a very easy sell. Um, he got it. He knew a lot of people that were. In, he had friends that were in prison. He he knew. He sent packages before. Um, one of the things that he uh, said to me at our first meeting was, we've been looking for you for 10 years. More than 10 years, we've been looking for you. He had told me about Jada Kiss and 2 Chains and some other people who were in marketing meetings and they were adamant about having their new album put on cassette for the inmates. But immediately, um, both sides saw, saw um, the same benefit. I still get it, being that it's still kind of fresh, you know, people are still just finding out about it. We didn't start advertising this until January, so we're in May. There are still people that are like, wow, I just heard that you guys have cassettes, that's great. Um, yeah, they're, they're really happy about it. Sorry. Definitely a win-win situation. I know what these kids are going through, I know what these men are going through, I know what these women are going through, I know what they're going through in prison and I know what the family, I know from both sides, I know from being an inmate, so I know what they're going on, what's going on with them in there, and from being a family member of someone that's incarcerated, I know what the families are going through also. I've heard the most craziest things sometimes. I heard uh, <coughs> inmates don't have money, or uh, I don't want that money, or, um, you know, Inmates are do only a few things in life. Packages are one of them. Um, they, we want to make the inmates happy, but more, or just as important as making the inmates happy is making it easier for the families. You know, uh, most of our customers, family-wise, are women. 
you know, their moms, their, their wives, their girlfriends, and um, they're trying to hold it down out here without their other half being in there. It's hard, you know, life is hard as it is when you're, when you have your husband locked up. It's hard to take off a day of work. My, my, my customers, they don't have that luxury. They, they, can't take off, they can't take off a day of work, lose that pay, and send a package at the same time. So um, I'm happy to help I'm, both of them. I'm happy to help their mates and I'm happy to help their families. Getting this done was a lot easier than I expected. Had I known it was gonna go this simple, I would've started right, right from day one. Um, Universal has been great, Sean has been great, um, the Pat Monaco has been great, um, Elise Morrow has been great. They, they all have gone out of their way to help me and send a package and make this whole process um, simple. All the artists that we've worked with, I think it's over 60 now, um, they all have been, they've all came about helping us out with our charity. That's really um, how the Jada Kiss Prodigy, so Prodigy, for instance, um, came to support and perform at our Thanksgiving event for the children. So the charity is called In Arms Reach. It's for children from Harlem that have at least one parent in prison. Um, the, the charity is run by Russell Simmons, David Dinkins, Carl Banks from the Giants, um, Dr. Ben Chavez, um, Saigon, and there's a, 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 a ton of doctors, lawyers, and judges that sit on the board of this charity. They've been around for 13 years or five charity events a year for In Arms Reach. The kids come out, they meet the celebrities, the celebrities talk to them, uh, they perform, they take pictures. So it's a good experience for the children, the wives, the mentors, um, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad I could be a part of it. When I look to um, get artists to perform at these charity events, I look for artists that have been in prison. Like this is my first, um, this is my first choice would be to get an artist that has been in prison. So I knew I knew Prodigy just came home from jail, and I was friends with his booking agent. I reached out to uh, Ice and I asked them if we can get Prodigy in to do this charity event and okay. Tony Yeo, Tretch, um, Styles P, Uncle Murda, my son, Chi Ali, um, DMX, uh, I know I'm forgetting. Formula so a lot. Yeah. <laughs> First meeting that we had with Jada Kiss, he was floored with the idea. I didn't know that Jada Kiss w was really interested in doing the cassettes prior to me coming to Universal. Um, so how I met him was at a charity event. He performed. Then we, the next time we met, uh, I shot a commercial for BET uh, with Jada Kiss as the main person in the commercial, and then. They started contacting me about Jada Kiss wanting to invest in Santa Package. Um, I ran into Jada Kiss at Jada Kiss at one of his video shoots, probably February of this year, and we had a good hour-long conversation of how he wants to get involved financially, um, be a partner in Santa Package. He wants to invest money, and I couldn't ask for a better partner. I'm. Uh, really hoping that this goes through soon. You know, music is important, it's important to us out here. You can imagine how important it is to the inmates in there, like we needed to get by out here. I couldn't imagine myself without music out here. So I knew how important it is for the inmates in there to have their music. It kind of it helps you, whatever kind of mood you're in, it just helps that mood. It's this is the best. This. This, the target market and our customer, they're in a wall, they're, they're behind the wall. You know, it's like um, somebody compared it to the women in the beauty parlor. You know, like the beauty parlor people, they know everything. They know everything that's going on. Yeah, because they're all sitting there in that one room talking. The same thing with the inmates. They, they're talking amongst themselves. They know that every single person that's in there need what we have. 
So uh, we get a lot of word of mouth here. In the immediate future, we're going to add more titles. I just placed, actually, I just placed another order with Universal for another 25 titles um, last Thursday. So we're already adding more titles. Um, I added 50 Cent, The Game, Big E, Big L. Um, but moving forward, we will just be coming up on our two-year anniversary in business June 1st of this year. We'll be up two years. So we will continue to open up, we will start to open up new states. The plan always was to wait two years, get two years of financial data, you know, build a machine, and then after two years we'll go for our second round of funding and look to do what we did in New York to duplicate that throughout the United States. Pennsylvania's next. Yes. And we're already working on Pennsylvania. State has different um, directives, have different rules on what you could get, what color, what size item, what, how heavy the box could be, what size box. So you really have to do the homework that I did on New York. Just have to do that for state by state, uh, state by state basis. That's why we're not New York's. I mean, America's inmate superstore right from Jump Street. It's a lot of work. Other people that do um, similar businesses to us, most of them are inmates like myself. They came home, saw an idea, and uh, moved on it. None of them are doing it to the scale or to the level that we're doing it. Um, I've seen some catalogs. Or there's one catalog, one person sells clothing. Another catalog, person sells magazines. Another person sells hats. Another person... so. They're not combining everything into one store, one place. And it's important for it all to be in one place. The inmates are only allowed to get two packages a month. So why would you want to order your sneakers from one person and your food from another person? You're out of packages. The biggest mistake we made when we um, first rolled out, we thought it was a good idea to use a fulfillment center. And we went with a fulfillment center in New Jersey. We didn't have this office. We were working um, out of our office in Wall Street. And it was a disaster. It was um, eight months of a disaster. This is not a company or a business to use a fulfillment center for. You need to have control over it. We were getting a lot of um, letters from inmates saying, oh, I, I ordered a $200 order, but the $50 watch wasn't in the box. And we had no way to control it. So at some point we were just like, no more fulfillment center. Let's put some money into a warehouse and uh, have more control over our orders going out or, or how they are going out. Real estate uh, agent looking for office space. This probably was like the 10th place that we looked at. But as soon as we came in, I seen Department of Corrections, Department of Corrections. I said, the Department of Corrections is in this building. And the real estate lady goes, yeah, the first, four, uh, the first three floors are the Bronx Parole Board. So if anybody is in the Bronx and on parole, they come and report to my building. So they're the first, it's a fourth story building. They're the first three floors and send a package is the fourth floor. So now we have real data and um, we know from the first year to the second year, you grown 70%. But it's not, it sounds like a big number, but the first year, nobody even knew about send a package, you know. Um, yeah, did we do a few orders in June and July and August of the first year, but very small, so. Um, but I can tell you in the past six months, we grow about 20% a month. I feel like my whole life, uh, you know, I'm 40 years old, I feel like my whole life has been getting me ready for some package. From going to jail, from coming home from jail and starting the sprint stores, to coming back to New York and starting the record company and making those connections, to learning marketing from the record company, I feel like my whole life in existence, every single step of the way, all came to help me in 2013. We will hope, in a year from now, we'll hope to be in three more states. Uh, we want to hit, uh, in, in this order, we want to hit Pennsylvania next, we want to hit New Orleans after that, and Florida. Florida after that, or Georgia, I'm not sure, depending on um, 
I want to get Little Wayne involved in um, the New Orleans um, market. I've already been in touch with them. I've met with Baby and Slim on two occasions. And um, so if Little Wayne is going to get involved or Baby and Slim, um, we're going to do New Orleans. I'm also talking with um, Young Jeezy. Depends on who moves first. Depends on if I'm going to open New Orleans or Georgia. Do so same question 10 years from now. I hope to be on a beach somewhere. I, I don't think, I, I believe in my heart that um, a f maybe two more years of this and someone's gonna come and buy us. Okay. Someone um, and that has the ability to roll this out in 50 states at one time. Hopefully Amazon, you know, somebody like an Amazon that has the infrastructure to make this happen, roll it out easily and the finances to roll it out in 50 states. Cool. All the artists that, um, we have on centerpackage.tv, um, they're all interested in getting them. I haven't met one person. Like, that's everybody's, that's all the artist's interests. They all have the same interest. They want to get their music. How can I get my music on cassette to the inmates? Um, right now, I'm working with Styles P, and Styles P is doing uh, uh, an album just for Center Package. It's just for inmates. We want to. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to. We want to do something like, for like a, like a FUBU series, like for us, by us, for inmates, by inmates. You know, Styles P did time, like uh, Prodigy. There's no short Mano. There's no shortage of uh, Tony Yayo. There's no shortage of people that uh, hip hop um, artists that have been in prison. So I want to. Within this next year, also, I want to start this series of for us files. A, not everybody in prison is uh, is guilty, but for the ones that are guilty, my brother, me, you know, anybody who's guilty, they're already doing their time. You don't have to triple, quadruple punish them. Like they're, they're doing their time, but in doing their time, they do a few things. They do phone calls, they do visits, they do uh, packages. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I feel they deserve. It's a lifesaver for their families. Like, um, I'm glad that it's easier for the families, and I'm glad that I'm able to help the inmates in their process of getting their packages. Uh, the inmates kind of don't have much going on. So they have all month to figure out who this month or next month is going to send them their package. It doesn't always, sometimes it's the same person, but a lot of times it's not. You know, sometimes it's the wife always sending every month. But sometimes some people have their friend this month, next month their girlfriend, the month after that their wife, the next month, their, you know, their cousin. Or, and, and they just split it up and it's a different person ordering from them every, um, every month. Um. Cool. I was good for the first one.